I moved into RPA. So I was one of the initiator of automation in Malaysia. So I have uh, mentored more than 20 plus organizations across the world, like Malaysia, Thailand, Australia, Singapore, India, Sri Lanka, so and Cambodia too. So uh, I resigned to my job. Uh, when I resigned to my job, I was a solution architect role. I was in solution architect role. Now I established my company, Kafnipur Solutions, um, where you can see the LinkedIn uh, profile here for the Kafnipur page. And um, presently operating in Malaysia and India with 32 plus resources. And um, as promised earlier by, I mean, the same thing also stated by uh, Nikolai Satyavarapu on like um, paid internships and the job offers to the freshers because we committed for this as you might have seen in my statement itself like we have onboarded more than 15 resources from fresh talents till date so um, among 32 resources so there are 15 resources we have from the uh, fresh talents only so you still got those who perform better here you still got chance so all the best to you people and in today's topic we are going to discuss about what is variable what is argument and how to create arguments and variables and uh, we discuss slightly about string manipulation what is the use of string manipulation or the string operators right so let's dig into the session so i'm opening the studio so in yesterday's session you might have observed about the overview of the studio and you might have the options available in the studio right so this is the area where we do the ide so uh, this is the ide we call it as like where you develop the code right so and these are the activities where we drag and drop so with the help of the drag and dropping the activities we develop the framework or we develop the code correct so let us so today's topic is variables first let's discuss about variables so let me open my thing you can see it variables what is a variable what is a variable variable is you can think it like a container right you can think it like a container which contain what the containers does containers actually holds some things right few things you can you can you can put inside container you can put anything Right, so variable is also kind of container, but when it comes to the uh, technical word, so it's a kind of memory. Memory, which holds a value. Right, so that's what variable is. When you define a variable, when you define a variable, irrespective of that, it can be UI power, that can be RPA, that can be anything. In, in, in technology programming, when you take a word variable so that means when you define a variable a memory gets created okay so which will help to capture the value right so let's take a simple example here all right let's take a simple example here so i am trying to open this i am just trying to uh, let you know people what is the importance of uh, variable Let's say these are the few data which you are processing okay in your automation process this is a few rows of data right so you are trying to validate data from each row okay you are trying to extract the data from each row right so you know this right so the data may not be same every time so this is a dynamic right so let's say let's think about a simple scenario here you uh, there is a data gets populated every day 8 a.m in the morning from a vendor portal into the salesforce and you need to download the data like this then you need to process the data right so every day the data is different so reading the data the data which you are taking it as an input is dynamic right so the values are changing right every day the values will change Right. So in this case, 
you want to handle this data or you want to handle those values. Let's say if I take If I take any value, if I take any value, let me take like this instead of, okay. Let me take like this. So I'm getting the value from the input file. If I take like Steve and I'm doing some operation on this data. So every day is not going to be Steve, right? Every row is not going to be Steve, right? The data changes, right? The data changes. So in such cases, what you need, you need a system or you need a mechanism which holds this data irrespective of the value gets changed or not right so the container will remain same but the value keeps on changing right so that is where you can use variables right so if you can take the definition or uh, like uh, here container or memory which holds the value. Correct. So let's take an example here. Let's take an example here. However, you people are going to have the uh, Excel automation in future, but to uh, initiate about discuss up discussion about the variables, so I need something to you know read it here. Okay. I'll use read range to read the data. Let's say I'm reading the data from this file. Correct. So I'm reading the entire data. The output will be however you're going to discuss about this in the coming sessions. Right. So now my data is in this table. Correct. Now I want to see from each row, I want to validate some data from each row. Right. So in that case, right. So if I have to see, Okay, if I want to see, let me take so generally this activity will fetch the data from row. Okay. I will I will tell you, no, no need to worry, I will tell you. See here, so I am taking the data from the first name column. I am taking the data from the first name column. Right. So here in the first name column, I got multiple rows. Right. And in each row, the value is different. Now my requirement is to perform some validations on that particular column. Correct. My requirement is to perform some validations on that particular column. Let's say Let's say if the name of the employee or the user is Steve, right? I want to get the role of that particular user. See, let, let's think about this scenario, simple scenario here. Okay. So I cannot give the Steve as a hard coded here, right? So the thing is, I need to check. So what is the logic here? I need to check first row and check the what is the value. I need to check the second row and check the what is the value. Third row and check the what is the value. So that means the values are dynamic. So to read this, how to read this then? So we can read with a get row item. 
no issue but after that so you need a place where irrespective of what will be the value then put it into the put into that container and then verify the value of that container right because this is during the run time we don't know what data will fetch in right so for that purpose also we need variables right variable is a container which will help us to store the data and which will help us to carry the data throughout the run time so that we can do the validations on the data right so for example let's say i am getting the so this get row my item activity fetches the column value from each row because we are already inside the for each okay so if i take this into a variable then every row will be having every value column value from that row will be stored into this variable right so how you create a variable then so come here and see here create a variable here right let me take the variable name first name i created a variable name correct here you can see there is one more property here name the another property here is variable type what is the type of the variable what is type here type here is data type which data type of value that variable is going to hold right so let's say you are storing the data from here which is coming as text then you need to create the type as string because text is a plain text is a alphabetical characters plain alpha characters is string right we consider that as string so you need to variable type should be string if not let's say you are having some number let's say let's take like salary something and you are having some calculations if take the uh, what to call tds or something how much you need to cut like 10% from the salary so here the salary is 30000 let's say then you are doing some math on this so you need to read the data as a if you want to read that column you need to read the data into the variable as which variable you need to create in that case you need to create integer variable because you are holding the you want to hold the data of integer correct so that's what the variable type right so another one is another property which you can see here is scope what is the meaning of scope here what is this property actually scope property will help us to limit the scope of the variable what is that means let's say i have created the variable here right which is the first name because i am taking the value from here so i will take it in the output so that means i am storing the value of column from each row from the first name column of each row into this first name variable right so now let us see right i will write it here so the value will get right here okay so since i am storing this first name value here let me check that right so it will write down here the value you can see writing here okay so there is one more area where you can create the variables not only this uh, not only by creating the variable here but also at the output area also instead of defining at the variable space here also you can create a variable how you can create the variable you do the control k and give the name of the variable okay. right 
So you still can you can see the variable also created here. Right. So that's one part. Sorry, I skipped this part actually. So we are discussing about the scope. What is the scope? Scope is the limitation of the variable. Okay. Let's say I created here, see, I created here a fire name, and the scope of this variable is body. Which one? This one. Right. So when I created the variable. I limited the scope of this variable to this particular sequence only. So that means if I want to use that variable, I can use only within this scope. I cannot use it here. Let's see if I can use it beyond that scope, beyond that limit. See, I cannot even see the variable. What it will display? It will display as. If a name is not declared, correct? You will not be able to see in the variables pane also because you are already out of the scope. But if you can move it here, see the error has gone. So that means you are limiting the scope of the variable uses, right? So why the scope has been defined here? Why scope? Right? You might be having a question in your mind, like why all this unnecessary, uh, you know. Uh, Things to take care, like you can we put everything as a global, which will apply to the entire workflow. No, the thing is why the scope is very important is you are when you limit the variable to the particular limit area or the scope area. So that means you are releasing once the scope area completes, you are releasing the memory. So the memory is not anymore valid. You are releasing the memory from the variable, so that means, like let's say in real time project, you end up with creating more than five hundred six hundred variables for each workflow sometimes if it's a big project, right? So in that case, if you put everything as a global scope, which applies to the entire workflow, then you are putting unnecessary memory on the process, which further slows down the process execution. So it will not be considered as a proper optimization of the run, right? So that's why you need to limit the scope of the variables to that particular usage area only, correct? So this is about variable and the scope. There is one more value field which you can see it as default. What is it means default? Whenever this particular variable which you created. Gets initiated in which will be the area. Let's say in this area, my variable is getting initiated. Correct. This is the initiation of my variable. That means the variable is getting generated for the first time. Right. The variable is getting initiated here. The value is coming and sitting into this variable for the first time. Right. Before to the use of the variable, the variable. Whenever the variable where what I mean sorry where will be the variable scope starts from that particular point so what will be the value that you give here as a default the variable will be initiated with that value so that means the variable by default whenever you create a variable the variable it just creates a memory but the value will be null correct but whenever you give the default value here. That means instead of null value, you are giving some default value to the memory. So during the runtime, if that variable, if the if you have given the reference for that variable in any area like this, then the default value will be replaced. Right. So that's about the default value variable, variable type, scope, and default value. Right. So let's discuss about. The, so this is the importance of the variables. The variables help us to help us to hold the data and carry the data. Correct. See here, I have taken the variable. Now it's holding the value here. I am using it to show down the what will be what will be the variable. I can what will be the value. So here I can use it for the any further validations also. Like this.
see here i am using the variable name variable name for the validation So I'm checking whether this particular value is true or not. Correct. The variable is here. The variable is helping me to validate the data. Correct. So that's the importance of the variables. Now let's talk about the arguments. There is one more pane you can see, which is the arguments pane. Correct. So let us talk about the arguments. What is argument then? What is argument then? Arguments also helps us to pull the value. Same like variables. But then, what is the difference between the arguments and variables? Let me tell you one thing before we go to the arguments. Let me tell you one thing. In real-time scenarios, so, so this is this is theory, right? This is theory part. But in real-time scenarios, how we develop the project? Let's think about a simple project here. Okay, let's think about a simple project here. So, which the business has given this automation scenario to me to automate this? Okay, so I need to log into the Webmail system, right? Look for a particular mail with with the uh, uh, subject as invoice. Correct. If the sub, if the mail is there with the subject invoice, I need to read the mail body, download the invoice, and replay as addressed, then log out. This is my scenario which was given by the business to do the automation. In theory, you might have learned about automating this scenario, but in real time, do we develop this scenario in the same workflow or the same XML file? No, actually, whatever be the size of the workflow, we generally develop it in multiple XML files. We break down the process first. We break down the process, then we break down according to the application that we are using, or we break down based on the scenarios of the particular actions we are performing on the workflow right so in this case in this scenario if i want to break down this process so how how will i break down this process let's say i'll use login mail as a separate workflow correct check inbox as separate workflow correct and send reply as a workflow, log out as a workflow. Why? Why these minimum workflows? Can't we develop everything in the same workflow? You can, but code readability is a problem and code maintenance will be a problem because when you break down the process, the maintenance will be easy, the debugging will be easy. If you face and during the development also, the development part will become easy when you break down the process into multiple XAML files. Right. So here, perfect. I am perfectly breaking down the process into multiple XAML files, multiple project files. Okay. Now we have seen we use the variables in the process correct but it's quite obvious that 
let's say you get the data somewhere in the somewhere in the process and you use the data somewhere in the process that is quite obvious let's say here i am checking the inbox for example here i am checking the inbox and yes invoice is there in the check in the subject invoice is there in the particular mail invoice is there now what is my requirement i need to send a reply to send a reply i need to know the mail id correct i need to know the mail id from which mail the invoice has been sent right so i if I, if i want to send the reply so here i am fetching the which is mail id of sender but here i need to use this correct in this workflow i need to use the this mail id correct so that means what variables in variables if you can see variables i created the variable here in this workflow only and i have used the variable in the same workflow correct so if i use variable to hold this mail id of the sender can i pass it to this workflow i cannot because that is the limitation of the variable that is the limitation of the variable so that is where the arguments comes into the picture got my point right so whenever you want to whenever you have to pass the values across the workflows across the xaml files you use you create arguments so that's the difference variables so you might get the interview question also if you are preparing for this interview variables you can use within the same workflow right arguments you can use across workflows across workflows that means you can pass the values from one workflow to the other workflow that's where the arguments comes into the picture you cannot pass the variable from one workflow to the other workflow right so let us see how we can do this let us see how we can do this okay let's do the same thing here let's do the same thing here so i have created the variable uh, let me create a new xaml file so what i do now here is with the same example i will try to explain you on the arguments part okay so i read the data in the main xaml this is my workflow and i'll create a new workflow so i want i am here i want to break down my process okay so here uh, let me show you something to i will take i'll create new workflow again from here for that go to new and you can take flowchart or sequence then create so you see you can see so now i got two xaml files right two xaml files are two workflows so what i do i'll do this here so in this workflow i am reading the data the source of the data which is from the excel file right you can see here the output is into a table i am reading the excel file the output is a table here which is input db 
correct now i want to pass it to the next xaml file where i am utilizing this data to validate the data correct so in this case see i have created two xaml files correct two xaml files right so you can see here in the project this is the fetch data and this is the newly created workflow and in the project you can you can see this right since i have created multiple files that doesn't mean the both are both of these files are already got connected right it's not like you need to connect with each other that means you need to create the flow of the process manually so how can i can how can i create actually okay so there is a simple uh, thing you can do which is wherever you want to continue with the next pro next file the code which you want to run that is lied in the next file so you can just drag and drop else so which will create a invoke workflow file so from activities also you can do instead of that invoke workflow file which does the same thing here here select the file project file which you want to invoke invoking means what invoking means like that is where you want to use the code so from this once the studio or the bot start executing this activity let's say the bot started executing this activity the tool focus comes here executes this tool focus comes here and executes this to go to the next activity which is the invoking the file that means if you go inside this code and performs the what will be the code that you have written there and come back to the invoke area then if any other code you have written below to this invoke area that will be executed that's how the connecting the workflows works okay so how the arguments works here how the arguments works here so how to create the arguments then so go to the argument create the argument before to that let us back to let us discuss back our back about our scenario so in this case i have created a variable as input data correct so instead of that i need to create it as a argument because i need to pass it to the other workflow right and my value for this variable or for this data fetching is getting generated here the data is getting initiated here but i want to utilize the data in another workflow which is valid data xaml file so in that case i cannot use the variable i can use only the arguments so how i can create the argument then go to the arguments let me give the name like this output dd right so here there is one more property which you can see there is one fold folder i mean uh, uh, field which is in out in out and property these are the four values of this field so what is this actually what is this direction and the direction plays an important role in creation of the arguments utilization of the arguments what is it actually what is the meaning of in out and in out let's say let's think about the directions now let's think about this scenario the same scenario now okay i am fetching the value here in this workflow which is fetch data dot xaml file this is the uh, forget about this forget about this this is the area the data is getting initiated correct now i want to send this data to other workflow which is valid data xaml file so in this case what can i do 
I will create a argument which I have created as output DD. What I am doing here, I am actually sending this data out to another workflow, right? So that means my direction, the direction of this particular argument should be out, right? And the type of the argument type is same as a variable data type, right? So which type of data it is holding, right? So data table data, correct? So here I am going to give it as Correct. Now, I want to use this in this workflow, correct? I want to use this data in this workflow, right? So I'm sending the data from this workflow to this workflow. So that means I need something here to receive the data, right? So which I need to create another argument to receive the data, right, from the sender. So what I do, I'll tell you why I have written this. Right? Here the direction should be in because the data is coming or the values are coming from outside workflow into this workflow, right? So here the direction should be in. And the data type should be of same. Correct. Now I have created. So whenever you create any argument or whenever you change any argument, you need to first save them. Then only the arguments will get affected. Right. So I'll go here. Then, as I told earlier, I need to I need to connect the workflows. Right. So what I do. I'll drag and drop. Then I click on import arguments, which will fetch the argument from the invoked workflow, which is this. Correct. If I create new argument here, I need to save it again and come back here and I need to import again. Then only the arguments will be displayed here, else it will not. Right. So, yes, I got the arguments from the receiver, which is this, which is invoke workflow. Right. So, here I need to map. Correct. So, mapping with what? Which is this argument. So, now this is the argument and I am sending with the help of argument into this workflow. Here. Right. So that's the difference between the in and out. Out direction, where you keep out direction, when you are sending out the data, data to another workflow, that is where you give it as out. And the naming convention you should follow is that will help you to make the code easily readable. So whenever you see out underscore output DT or whatever be the variable or the argument name, so you can think that, okay, you are sending out this value to some other workflow. So that's why I have written here as in output DT. Right. So now the data will come here and here I am utilizing the data. There's a in out and here it is in. Correct. So, what is then in out? What is the in out property then? When you use in out, see, let's say here I am utilizing the data. Perfect. That's why I kept it as a in out. Perfect. So, now <clears throat> I want to push this data to some other workflow from here. So, that is where we use in out. So I'm utilizing here. So that means the data is coming in and I'm also sending out. That's why we use in out. And in out we use mostly in the cases whenever the data, the data is getting manipulated. Whenever the data, the data is getting changed and you are sending out the data, the manipulated data. 
So in that cases, you use in out. Here you need to use in out in that case. So that's the differences between the in, in out, and out. Right. So here, what is the property then? So property means you are not utilizing that argument at that moment, at the current state. Right. So whenever you want to utilize that property, that argument later. So in that case, you can just mark it as a property. So let's try to this. So let me let me put the breakpoint here so that you, you will see. The bot not able to go. But there is no steel. Yes. What happened? Let me see. Steel. It is steel in success. Yes. You have seen this, right? So the data is already here and it executed and it has written as success, right? So we, what we did here, we actually fetch the data in this workflow and utilize the data in this workflow, right? So that's the importance of the arguments, right? So what, is, what the argument is doing here, you are initiating the value of the argument and you are putting the value into the argument here and the argument is carrying the value into this workflow sorry into this workflow and the value is getting replaced here so that means what variable we use to utilize the value inside the same workflow but the arguments we use to utilize the values across the workflows in the same project right so that's what the difference between the variable and argument right so this is basically about variables and arguments if you want to jump to the new topic another topic which is string operations or When I sorry to interrupt you, can I check your charging? Sorry? Can you check your laptop charging? Yeah, yeah, it will remain. No issue, no issue to sustain. To sustain. So string operations on the string manipulations. What is this means of string manipulation or the string string operations? What is, what is the meaning of manipulation? Manipulation is something which you are manipulating, you are changing, right? You are, you are doing some fabrication, right? So you are doing some kind of uh, beautification, right? Anything, anything which you are changing the values, right? During the runtime to do some validations, right? So that is where we generally use the methods of string manipulation, the string operators. So why, what is the need to change the data? What is the need? See, <clears throat> in real-time scenarios, in real-time real scenarios, you may not get the data that you're looking for. You may not get the actual data that you're looking for. Sometimes you get the raw data where you need to manipulate the data to get the actual value. Sometimes you need to look for the validation where you need to, let's say, let's think about the same scenario here. Let's think about the same scenario here. Uh, let me open this. As I said, this is the file the bot downloads from the Salesforce, right? And this file is an input file, which generally created by the human resource. Let's see. 
the human resource creates this data and dump it into a folder in the salesforce in the in, in a request in the salesforce then the bot then the bot will go in and download the data and the bot has to do the validations on this data right so it's quite obvious that the data which you are expecting let's say let's say i am expecting if this particular if i get any particular user with the first name as steve i want to send a notification email to the business team saying the steve record is there so that so the steve is already available in this list so just a simple example scenario here right so generally what we think generally what we think in real time scenario like as a, as a human being also what we think like we expect the actual data correct we expect the actual data with the naked eye yes even though the data is in small cases even though there are some spaces after the data correct it's quite easy for us for the naked eyes to <coughs> see to validate the data by looking at it yes still so that's fine for me so i can easily say that okay steve record is available but for the bot you need to give the actual validation right when you want to give the actual validation let's say here in the same scenario i am doing some kind of validations here correct the first name dot if i if i take like this the first name dot equals steve and i having some notification email sending here so does it goes to this uh, then part no it will not even though the val the data is valid see here the data is valid it's still steve but here it will not go inside this then part it will not send an email which is the wrong coding even though you are doing correct but as per the logic it's wrong how because i kept here capital s whereas in the input data is coming as small even though the name is correct the record is correct that is the actual record that we are looking for but the bot will not perform the same activity of behavior which we are actually expecting right in that case what you need you need to manipulate the data for the validation right so what i am doing here i am making it to to lower so that means what will be the data that i am fetching in that variable so i am converting the entire data into the to lower then the trim function will remove the spaces at the ends of the string so if any spaces comes in right then equals then i am doing this this type of validation i am doing so in this case if you take this same scenario in this case what happens even though there is a human error by putting the extra spaces at the trial or at the ends or irrespective of the case of the characters here so what it does it will still validate just a correct data so in real time scenarios when you develop the code you need to make the bot to understand the data right so to make the bot to understand the data so you need to modify the data right so that's what one of the string operation which you can do which is a trim trim function actually eliminates the spaces from the trial ends right so next one is there are so many string operations which you can perform on the data which is we just seen trim right so let me take another example here so this is the string right here you can see there is one more function which is substring what the substring does substring fetches the 
data from a particular position to particular position. Let's say here, my data is Steve Smith, right? I am looking for the actual value, which is if, if the data contains, if the particular value contains, so I want to fetch the second, I want to fetch the second name. Okay, if the first name itself contains two values, combination of two values, two words, so I want to fetch the second one. So that's my requirement here. So in that case, how can I do that? How can I do that? So in that case, what I need, I need to split the data. I need to split the data, correct? Split the data and take the value which is in the second position. Correct. So that is where we see the splitting the data. Let's say here first name dot split. Splitting on what basis I am splitting on the space. Here I got space, right? So on space, based on space, I'm splitting dot. To characterize the function which we use to, which which will convert to that string into the array. That means multiple values in the same variable. Then which index I want? One value. Right? Then equals or what will be the value that, you, that I'm looking for, Smith. So what I'm doing here literally, I'm splitting the data and I'm doing the validation. If the data is having if the value is having smith as a second name included in the first name itself so i am splitting it with the help of the space and i am taking the first index because the index starts from zero here so when i split this data with the space the steve comes under zero index the smith comes under one index index one then the data will be split into this so i am taking the first value and then equals with I'm verifying whether it is having the Smith or not. Right. So as I said, the concept here, what I'm trying to let you people know that what I'm trying to tell you here is you cannot expect the actual data that you're looking for in the real time scenario. So you need to manipulate the data. So all these string operations are available to perform the data to perform the validations, right? So there are some very, very good websites or the Excel called also providing a lot of string uh, uh, operations with the real time examples. So you can refer that as well. It will help you a lot because in real time scenarios, so this is where you actually get confused and this is where you need to perform. If you want to take the best practices, if you want to put in the best practices into the coding, so the string operations are, you should be very strong in string operations and the string manipulations, right? So this is all about variables, arguments and string operations. What is the importance of string operations? Where we use string operations? Where we use string operations? Whenever there is no actual data that uh, is, you know, uh, whenever you fetch the data and you want, you are looking for a particular data and you need to manipulate the data, then only you'll get the actual data. Okay? So for that purpose, you need string operations. Uh, string manipulation. All right, um, uh, that's it from my end on this topic. Thanks a lot for joining today. Please be do the RSVP for tomorrow's session. And um, I'm signing up. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Nikolesh. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vinay. <coughs> Just will pause for them. <laughs> Oh.
so i hope every uh, able to see my screen okay uh okay we, we have 547 people but in menti if you see here below the screen only 430 people so okay it's already on we are already on time so i'm starting it all the very best and for, so first question on your screen please Okay, it's not coming. First question, okay. What is the difference between variable and argument? So you just see the options on your screen. So this is a big question. So we gave 30 seconds for this question, okay. So try to answer it. Organizers and speakers don't answer. <laughs> Organizers and speakers don't answer it. So last three seconds. Time's up. Wow. Almost most of the people give the correct answer. The answer is we can use variable only at a defined workflow and we can use the arguments across workflow. So that is the first question. So almost most of the people give the correct answer. And second question. So be ready for second question. Okay. So what is the second question? Generic variable cannot hold one of the below data type value. What is that? So generic variable cannot hold one of the below data type. What is that? So everybody give the answer right or wrong. You will get the answer right. Try to give the answers. Last three seconds. Time's up. So the correct answer is Boolean. But most of the gave, people gave data time. So uh, read the question again. Generic variable cannot hold the one of the below data type value. What is that? Cannot hold. Okay. So it is Boolean. So before going to next question, again, I'm repeating here only. If some of the persons already got awarded yesterday or day before yesterday, and again, they are winners today. So we will consider the next person. So we will not consider the same person. Okay. We will consider the new person. So 17 days, 17 into two or 17 into three will be the new persons, not the repeated winner again. If the winner is there, but fine, we'll go to the next person who is there. So last question, last question on your screen. One of the below option is not the part of string manipulation. What is that? Again, I gave a big uh, uh, time for this question. You just see on your screen, okay? Then it will be visible big. One of the below option is not the part of the string manipulation. What is that? Don't see my screen. Answer from your screen. Okay. Okay. Wow. Many of them gave the correct answer. The one of the below option is not the part of the string manipulation. What is that? The answer is string dot output string length. Okay. Okay, good. That's good. Let's see the results. So again, I'm repeating if yesterday is the winner came here again. So we'll consider the next person. Okay, let's see the results. So that is why I said so congratulations Preeti, Harsh and Amisha. So that is why I said so we will not take Preeti here today. So we will take Harsh Jain. Okay, Harsh Jain and Amisha. So Harsh Jain and Amisha are the winners today. So uh, Harsh Jain and Amisha, you should email me with your complete address and email ID and the phone number as well. Okay. So uh, so Harsh Jain and Amisha. 
are the winners for today so that this is will repeat so that is why i announced earlier only if yesterday will be the winner again coming so harsh jain you need to give the message okay so sorry harsh jain so please drop me email without fail okay uh, kiran if you are available can you share your screen once Harsh Jain and Mr. Uh, sorry, Amisha, Amisha. Okay, if you see the screen, if you see the screen, I am giving you the <laughs> reference that we already took the we already took the details of the winners of day one and day two. If you see Gayatri Sharma, Priti Kini, and the other person. Uh, okay, so all these uh, people we already took. So like this. you will get the details uh, you need to send the details the complete address so we see the four members so i'm just showing you for the reference okay definitely we will send the gifts after the workshop not today so see uh, my organizer is already typing we will not share the address don't worry okay i just seeing the screen okay kiran you can stop the screen Kiran, you can stop this screen sharing. So don't worry about yes, the address, stop, brother. No, no worries. So we are no, will not share your addresses to anybody. Okay. So we are just uh, giving you the glimpse that. So Umesh, <laughs> Umesh Maripalli, yeah, you gave the correct answer. Might be, but before that, somebody answered in on time. So that is the thing we need to calculate. So. again uh, before closing this session so please do our kiran can you give the links so please do rsvp for tomorrow session tomorrow is very exciting so tomorrow is excel automation i guess so please do rsvp and please write in linkedin post i do, i not seeing any single linkedin post or any where in the social media that what you learned from the session what the speaker taught to you what 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 is the useful of this workshop so why we ask you these people okay so we are spending lots of time to organize these meetups at least from your side ye yeah, subscribing a youtube channel subscribing to other speakers youtube channels and writing a post on behalf of us, us so it gives more energy to do the sessions it gives more energy to to work on the things if you see without asking from my end or without asking from you only so one of our speaker one of our uit community leader you vajrang announced something so on, so this is only from his side right so maybe like that some other speakers also will do something for you some other things are also waiting for you so you just need to grab that kind of opportunities so okay so for that you just need to join all the sessions be try to be winner of the sessions and try to subscribe to our channels and wait for the recording videos guys i will definitely share the recording videos once it is available okay and take a moment right now if we are here, i am seeing 300 people till now in the call so right now everybody try to rsvp to that session now itself in front of me i will refresh my dashboard and i will see whether it is getting refreshed or not because we have five more minutes okay so uh, we have <clears throat> see one we have given one more channel so that is vajrang channel so try to browse the videos from vajrang channel automate with <coughs> ui pa <laughs> so it is having wonderful videos okay so try to browse it and try to subscribe it okay and uh, again i'm saying again we have 300 people around and i'm seeing i'm not seeing any r r is being increased for tomorrow so try to rsvp guys then only you can join the session i request everyone to do that and hearty congratulations again harsh jain and amisha so harsh jain and amisha take my email id and drop the a complete address to my email id don't worry we will not share your addresses to anybody okay it will be with us and it will be with only organizers okay and uh, okay that's all from my our end guys so thank you so much thank you so much for joining the session and we'll meet us tomorrow same time excel automation by sai kiran and swami so we'll see the complete uh, uh, deep dive from today we are focusing on the complete deep dive of ui path 
so we'll have a lot of sessions more all the very best and all especially all the very best to all the freshers who are available here okay and uh, thank you so much guys cheers bye bye and harsh jain and amisha you just need to drop me the emails okay thank you guys cheers thanks a lot everyone for joining the session